Hi, everybody. Welcome to whatever episode number this is uh, for another live Q&A, number 18. We've done these for a year and a half. Wow. Yeah, it's true. That's kind of crazy. Crazy tech. We have fun doing these episodes. They are driven by a very simple concept. You give questions, cues to Andrew, A, but not the A in Q&A, although no. it could be. You just have to be the Q, though. I'm really Where afraid. I'm really afraid where that's about to go. So let's not let's not go down that path. Uh, and then I have five minutes to answer them to my, the best of my ability, and I enjoy the challenge. And people seem to enjoy the format, so we do them and we do them live and we put them out. We even have some people watching live right now, and hopefully, starting next month, we're going to be a little bit more structured as to when we do these. Yeah, and let you know ahead of time for those of you who would like to join. If you are listening, you could watch. If you're watching, you can listen later, of course. And yeah, so I turn it over to you. Man, I got to be in charge now. Just you're always in charge of these. I know. I'm just kidding. I um, just hang out. So I'm me, just the talent. Yeah, I know. The we show only, pony. That's right. We only hire you for your good looks. That's right. Good thing I cut my hair this morning. <laughs> um, so okay, so we've got a handful of questions to ask. We do have a live guest coming Yay. on in just a little bit. Um, but the first question that we're going to ask you, and you're going to have five minutes to discuss it. Five minutes. That's it, five. Just, uh, and just a reminder, if you are here watching live, we do have six people watching right now. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, if you have a question you want to ask, you can just type it in the chat. And I'll see it because I have an eye going won't. right here. I'm not watching. Uh, and I can ask it. Or if you'd like to come on live and actually come on video and ask your question live, mm -hmm. you can do that. Just shoot me a message and let we me know. We have the technology. That's right. Uh, all right. So this first question comes in from Chris Rickard. Hi, Chris Rickard. His question uh, is an interesting one. If you could design a uniform for training martial arts in a modern world as a replacement for a traditional mm -hmm. uniform, what would it look like? Okay. Um, I'm thinking of features. Like the places I'm starting are things that would be helpful for a martial arts uniform that do not exist now. Mm -hmm. Better pockets that do not look like they have pockets. Not cargo pants. I would pockets. say pockets to begin with. Most uniforms. I've, I've, I've got a couple that do, but they're very shallow. They're very shallow pockets. I would also put a pocket on the inside of the top. Mm -hmm. It would probably be a wraparound top because I think that that is easiest to accommodate for different body styles. I feel like the pullover doesn't work quite as well for either very big or very small people. It just doesn't hang right. And I feel like you can get closer to something that fits well with the wraparound style. I think having, um, if not additional, if not Velcro, maybe some additional options on the ties. I think there's a way that maybe the first one goes around and, and ties conventionally, but the second one as it comes around could be more like a, like a belt where it kind of ho hoops through and ties around. So you could have better, more adjustable spots mm -hmm. okay okay uh i think material wise and and we tried this well, we did this and we did it successfully but people didn't seem excited about it like i was when we released our second version of our taekwondo uniform there was four-way stretch in the gusset mm -hmm. in, in the crotch of the pants mm -hmm. and it kept them from binding up and they worked amazing I, I still have a couple for myself i love those pants and they're very lightweight so at the points of stress which would be armpits mm -hmm. gusset I would put in a, a, a more stretchy material. Um, and it, it's funny, I've had this idea in the back of my head, and I don't think that we're ever going to do it, so I don't mind talking about it. But it came up in conversation at class. What in the back of my, my head, uh, I, I have named gi spenders. Mm. Suspenders, <clears throat> some kind of integrated thing that uses the fact that your shoulders exist and hold the top up to help hold the pants up. Because it's really difficult to have a set of pants 
that are loose enough to be comfortable, mm -hmm. but not fall down. And that's probably the best way to do it is to have some kind of hanging mechanism through that. But how you do that, I don't know. But those are the things that I think about when it comes to uniforms. If you want the closest thing to actual clothing that I might suggest, mm -hmm. it's a tracksuit. Interesting. Okay. It's, it's a it's a light polyester tracksuit. You know, it's lightweight. It moves. It breathes. Um, cuffed at the end quite often mm -hmm. to keep things in place, so you can you know, so your your longer sleeve doesn't come down over your fingertips, and so you're not stepping on your pants. You know, things like that. Oh, okay. I like it. Anything you would add? No. Would you do differently? No. I, I mean, I think a, a stretchable. Uh, Gusset, I think, is is important, um, so that you have the ability to be a little more flexible yeah. um, in your every, you know, and and this is, you know, his thing was, you know, training with with everyday modern, like, you know, that's what would be useful for sure. Um, you know, a lot of the fabrics that were originally used just didn't have that stretch, right. so makes sense. Okay. Um, you mentioned the the taekwondo uniform that you came out with with the yeah. stretchable stuff um you are constantly coming out with new stuff it's all the time. right all the time and one of the cool things about being in the patreon is we kind of sometimes get a back room look at like behind the scenes some of the stuff you're working on uh i think it's one of the cool perks of being in patreon is you can kind of peek behind the curtains i, I try to let people in the patreon know what's going on behind the scenes because i figure if you're in that group, you have, by definition, shelled out at least a couple bucks a month. Because, yeah. yeah, it starts at $2 a month. And I'm talking to our biggest supporters. And as our biggest supporters, it means that I'm going to get probably the best feedback. Hey, I'm thinking about trying this. What if we did this? What did you all think of this? Everybody come to this. And that way, I know that I'm going to get some feedback. Mm -hmm. um, it also means that when I'm excited about something, I can share it with the people who are going to be most receptive to that excitement without having to ruin the surprise to the general public. Yeah. Because there, there are times that we do things that kind of need to hit with a splash. Like mm -hmm. when we did the award stuff, mm -hmm. you know, that was something that couldn't be just disclosed to everyone. And frankly, most of the people involved in that project are part of the awards group or yeah. are part of the Patreon. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I am, uh, I feel pretty confident and I've talked about it on the show yeah. before that I am the co-host of the show because of Patreon. Not that I paid for the spot, but I found out about it because you emailed the Patreon subscribers and said, Hey, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about this. What do you guys think? And I, got that email and said, I would be interested. And my logic there was who better to talk to first than the people who love what we do enough to share money. Yeah, that was awesome. Absolutely. So welcome to the show, Dan. So welcome to the show. First off, yeah. First off, thank you guys for everything you guys do. Uh, I'm Dan Ham. Um, so uh, I've been a loyal listener for about two years now. Um, nice. So my question comes from the fact that recently I started uh, from episode one and I'm just working my way through so I don't miss any of the episodes. I'm right around episode 200. Wait, when did you start doing that? Uh, four months ago, but I had a month where I didn't listen because I had a baby. You've listened to 200 episodes in three months? I drive 45 minutes every day for work. Wow. And then I also drive between restaurants. So I end up spending probably three hours a day, four hours a day I, in the car. I am, yeah. I am both honored and concerned. <laughs> That's, um, that is so much time with my voice. I don't know how to feel. Thank you. Um, yeah. No. Uh, and you look just, the bad episodes, the early ones. They get better. They get so much better. Well, it's actually, I was going to say you should go through and like listen to like one every like 50 in or like just a random one every 50 and just see how drastically it changes. It, it, yeah. So, um, but anyways, I mean, it, it, um, yeah. Yeah. Episode 189, you've talked about um, participation trophies. 
Yeah, I still hate those. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm, I'm on board with you, but I, it triggered a thought in my head. Okay. And I want to know what your thoughts are on this. What if you got rid of the certificate of participation and it became a certificate of experience, kind of like a resume? Oh, great question. Uh, a different word for certificate of attendance. You know, yeah. something to chronicle that you did this work, but not yeah. necessarily how well you did the work. Yeah, you go to a school, you get a degree. This is a certificate of experience. You know, you get, you know, different certificates for work. And it mm. also could teach, you know, young uh, martial artists real life applications like a resume. Like this is how you build, you know, your knowledge base. And yeah. that's the reward. Not, not that you just showed up, but that you actually gained something out of it. Are we timing this one? I've got it. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm I'm ready. Right. Dana, is that that all you? Yep. Is that what you're laying out for me to respond to? Yep. Okay. okay. Go. All right. So, I love the general premise, and and I think that it is very much in line with my thoughts on the subject. I think in I think you said it was 189. I think back on that episode, I talked about having if if you want to give away something, especially at a tournament, for people attending call it what it is it, it is it is a an attendance gift it is an attendance trophy it's not a a you won it's a here you go but instead of a trophy making it something that is you know like in this case a certificate something that is doesn't carry the perceived weight of accomplishment that it's about you came and you did this thing when i think about you gave the example of college when i think about college there's the diploma, which whether I had a 4.0 or a 2.34, whatever GPA, we get the same diploma because theoretically we have passed the same competency. Uh, you could make a corollary there to martial arts. You know, if I've got a blue belt and you've got a blue belt, doesn't mean we know the same stuff exactly. It doesn't mean we're as I'm as good as you, but it means, means we both cross a certain threshold, theoretically, of, of knowledge. But there are also ways where you can parallel that, that I think become relevant, or, or kind of walk alongside uh, honor societies. Most colleges have those, you know, you graduate cum laude, summa cum laude, magna cum laude, you're part of the whatever school honor society. And I think that can be a, a way of doing both. So if we're if we're thinking about martial arts in a professional sense, like with a resume, with a, a CV, would probably be a better uh, a relatable item there. Absolutely, I attended this seminar. I trained with this person. There are a lot of people out there who will claim, you know, I've trained with this person. And the way they they explain it, it's it implies that they've been to their school and they've earned rank when really they've been to a few, maybe even just one seminar. And that doesn't work well. That doesn't it, it feels dishonest when you hear it and you think that they're saying, I've trained with this person at their school and earned rank, and then you hear they've been to a couple seminars, it feels dishonest. But if there was a way, and I don't know what off the top of my head, what language we might use. But if there was a way to say, okay, I am this rank, but here is my experience beyond simply rank, because rank is reducing everything to one thing, mm -hmm. which, you know, you get people and they say, I have this rank in this and this rank in this and this rank in this. They're trying, I, I, it can come across arrogant, but I think at the heart of it, they're trying to do what you're suggesting, which is to provide some context for the breadth of their experience. One minute left. And to be able to share that in such a way, I think makes a lot of sense. I would never recommend that we actually implement it this way, but I think the notion of like merit badges is actually pretty close to what I would love to see because you can be really good at one certain thing, but not very good at another thing. And the more that we can differentiate between quality of skill within certain things, 
the more encouragement there is for people to better the things that they're not so good at. All right. Awesome. So I took away from this that the whistle kick track suit is going to have merit badges. <laughs> yes. Love it. Yes. Or it's... at least a room to put patches. No, we're going to silk screen on like four star general equivalencies of medals. <laughs> Just all Tassels. over. It's going gonna, gonna to be an all over printed item because it's going to have to wrap around to the back. The back <laughs> is going to be covered with medals too. And we'll, awesome. we'll have a belt that you can see the ends come down the legs and it'll just be, you know, stripes. The whole thing. Awesome. Well, I'll let you guys get on to it and I will hop back into listening. But thanks again for both of you guys and everything you guys do. All right. Absolutely. Thank you, you so wow. much for coming on. I love when we can have people come on you can, you can and ask live. I think yes. that's a lot of fun. And shout out to Dan for just being willing to come on camera because not everybody's willing to do that. It, no, it, it takes some. Do we have anybody else coming on live? No, okay. We don't. We, let's, we can resituate, situate. Not that I don't like sitting this close to you, but it just. It's all good. It fills the frame better when we have a little bit. In the yeah, yeah. Um, What's next? Review. Review. I wish you all left more reviews. Reviews make me happy. Why do they make me well, and reviews make a difference? They and that's too. why they make me happy. Yeah. Because it's not just a, an ego feeding thing. We have found that leaving a review or a rating is like the number one thing people can do that takes minimal time. Like it's the best value of what you can do that helps the show. So just a reminder, Facebook, the whistle kick martial arts page, not you're not gonna find a specific page for the show. But Whistle Kick Martial Arts, if you can leave a review there. Google, if you Google Whistle Kick, you'll see you can leave a review. Uh, Apple Podcasts, that's where we have the most reviews. Mm -hmm. But most of those are older. If we could get some more, you know, because let's face it, it doesn't happen constantly. But when people are looking for new shows to listen to, these reviews are, are views. Like they become part of these algorithms. And then the place that we've done the best, and I want to shout out, I can't name you because it's just ratings, but Spotify. You guys are doing really, really well rating us on Spotify. And if you don't listen to us on Spotify, you just need to listen to like 30 seconds of one episode, and then you can leave a rating. But we do have a review today, and I'm going to read a little bit of it. And if this person, I forgot their name, Sean Michael, if Sean Michael writes to us, I will send you a code for a gift certificate. Like not like $25 off this. No, like just $25 off. So if you leave a re leave a review and we read your review, you get money. Sort of. Not quite money. You get free stuff. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> Sean's was, shoot, where'd I go? Here it is. I listen to the podcast at least twice a week. Andrew has truly found his calling. I guess I have. Knows how to pick the right people to interview. Side note, I've had the pleasure of speaking with Andrew on a Zoom call. Yep. Nothing but respect for whistle kick. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. And yeah, just email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com, and I'll get you your, your code. All right, you ready? To, to everyone who's left reviews in the past, thank you. You can't, you can't. Please don't unreview and then review again. <laughs> but if you left a review six years ago, you can leave another review. I mean, probably the show has. Yeah, you can. The show has okay. absolutely changed in six years. There may be new things you want to, you know. There you go. I don't think everybody knew because I, I didn't know you could leave another review. I'm pretty sure you can. Okay. If you can't, just make sure you've done all the spots, and if you've done all the spots. Thank you. Tell you what, if you've got reviews <clears throat> on all three spots, let's say four, if you have reviews on Apple Podcasts, Google, Facebook, and you left a rating on Spotify, send me a screenshot of all four. Oh, boy. I will make it worth your while. Okay, there you go. All right, are you ready for the next question? I sure am. This question is actually from me. <clears throat> That's right, me. <laughs> I, I emailed myself a question. From a different account? Sure. Um, we have talked about testing and, yeah. you know, things of that in the past. Mm -hmm. 
and we've talked about how you know instructors often will they'll put you up to to, to grade or to test when they know you're ready for it anyway. Yep. What would it take for you to actually fail a student on a test? So I've always said that in my mind, a student is off is given the opportunity to test when the instructor believes they are ready, mm -hmm. that they, they are ready for their next rank, that the student passes when they perform with the recognition mm -hmm. that they are ready. Mm -hmm. um, the question is about what I would do, not what everyone should do. Mm -hmm. This is absolutely so Jared. there are for sure there are, are schools out there that test on a certain cycle. And failing those tests is a normal part of life, which I actually kind of like an element of that. But that's not how I was brought up. That's not how I've run my school in the past. When and if I have a school in the future, it is not how I would run my school. It's not disparagement. It's just the way I see it. In order to fail a student, I would have to see one of two things would have to happen. They would have to quit. They would have to say, I'm not doing this, mm -hmm. in, in, whether verbally or physically or I guess those would be the only two possibilities. Um, two, they would have to be disrespectful during the test. Like they get mad at their training partner, punch them in the face. Mm -hmm. Or three, likely something changed for them. In between when I said you are testing and the test, they stopped training. They obviously did not practice. They didn't take it seriously in their preparation time. And looking at it saying, you know, they were ready and they've actually regressed. They've regressed in some way. Could be technical. Um, could be an attitude. And the, I think the further in rank someone progresses, the more important that gap between you are testing and your test becomes. Hmm. I don't know anybody who hears you're testing and they don't say, oh, I've got to put some time in. I want to be ready. I want to be the best version of myself I can for that moment in a way that is obviously unsustainable. When I tested for my second degree in Taekwondo, I think it was like six or eight weeks before I was practicing with others. It was a big test. We were getting together to do forms every weekend. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to spend every weekend of my life getting together with people to do forms. I'm just not going to do it. But in that case, I did because I wanted to be able to put my best foot forward to honor my instructor and respect myself to say, yes, I do deserve this. Cool. Are you satisfied with that answer? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a legit answer. Do you have a different approach? No, no, I, I agree. I think the, the quitting on yourself is an important one for me. Uh, and you hit the two things that I would have, which was quitting and being disrespectful. And the disrespectful could be made, could be just not having control. Like, I mean, that's the other thing. It wouldn't necessarily be disrespectful, but if you are sparring and you go so far to have no control and you physically hurt someone when I know you have the ability to not do that. I guess that would be disrespectful, I guess. I'm yeah. thinking more of, of, you know, like somebody mouthing off in a test, you know, yeah. that they're just, they're may, maybe they take a shot and they're hurt. Yeah. And, and, and their reaction to being hurt is to mouth off. Yeah. Yeah. That's something that as you get higher in rank, I'm going to become less tolerant of. Yep, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, one of the things we talked about earlier in the Patreon is that constantly coming up with new products. Yeah. Um, what's going on? What are we? What are, do we have any products coming up that people can keep an eye out for? There's a there's a constant um, development cycle of things, and I've got some time carved out in a few weeks to put together what is essentially going to be the fall and the winter apparel collections mm -hmm. because I, I like doing that work, but I like doing that work when I can focus on it. And so I'm actually going to go away for a couple of days and um, walk around other stores and 
not steal their ideas because you know walking into our Timberland store, yeah, yeah, you know, um, we don't have whistle kick flannel. Though I would really love oh. if one of our apparel, co- like the companies that we partner with, allowed oh. us to very easily put like the whistle kick logo embroidered on a flannel shirt. I would absolutely love that. That would be probably be half my wardrobe. But I think one of the things you're referencing, and we we got to kind of play with it earlier. Um, made a puzzle out of the whistle cake logo. There it is. Uh, because it's a lot of different shades of orange. Yeah. And I was like, hey, I've been carrying this thing around. I've had it for a few weeks now. Yes. And we recorded an episode that'll come out soon. Next after, week. Next week. Next week after this. After this one is officially released. Yeah. So those of you watching live, not next week, in a few weeks. Uh, but we had a conversation. Did an episode while we worked on this puzzle. Pretty and um, if you are a competitive puzzle person, you want Andrew and not myself. I'm a puzzle guy. Seven eighths, 14 fifteenths. So much more of that puzzle going together was you than me. I love doing puzzles. I can tell. I was like, oh, I got these two pieces. You've done three sides. <laughs> Oops. I kind of rallied at the end. I got a few at the you end. You did. You did. So um, this puzzle and everything else that we sell. But there's always new products. Product. There's always new stuff coming. And out. we don't always talk about it because sometimes we'll have like six things drop at the same time because yeah. the timing doesn't always work out. And I'll mention, I try to mention everything on the newsletter. You know, if you haven't signed up for the newsletter, uh, whistlekick.com or whistlekickmarchwatchradio.com. I will often show things on First Cup, mm-hmm. which is uh, live at 6.30 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time. Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday. And, you know, we, with all of the new stuff coming out on whistlekick.com, you can always use the code PODCAST15. Podcast save 15. yourself a little bit of money. But awesome. All right. You ready for your next question? I am always ready for my next question. Right. This First off, uh, Mark Warner's in the chat. Hey, this Mark. Up. And the next question is... Is from Mark Warner. Did he ask it just now, or is that he asked this morning? He sent it to me okay. this morning. That's some good time. Um, he mentioned so Mark often listens to you on First Cup, mm-hmm. and this morning you mentioned that you had gone to Taekwondo class last night. I did. I did uh, go to Taekwondo and, class. Last you know, night. he he sent me a message. Oh, said, awesome. "Listening to Jeremy this morning, he seemed very energetic over his class last night." Any advice to instructors on how to make classes as exciting as that one seemed to be? Mm. How can instructors make classes as exciting as last night's was? Great question, Mark. Thank you. It is a good question. Uh, The number one thing is the most difficult thing, and that is a willingness to throw out your plan based on who is there. Mm. So in in the example of last night, what made it a lot of fun was the instructor said, oh, you know, it's too bad it's not Wednesday. This group of you that aren't normally here are here. We could spar. And I said, well, sir, um, that's your rule. You can change it. And he kind of went, you're right. So we sparred. Now, we could have had just as much fun doing certain other things. But I think it was his recognition that this was a good group for whatever reasons he determined, because he knows us to say, if we did this thing, this would work out really well. You know, what does that require? That requires him knowing us, what we're good at, what we enjoy doing. What's the intersection of that with, you know, everybody? It's a crazy Venn diagram. Where's that intersection? And it doesn't mean you can always do that. In this case, it was kind of special in that. We had somebody visiting who hadn't been to class in six months. They've, they've moved away and they still come up to visit Vermont. But so he, he was willing to make that exception. When I think about the classes that I've had over the years that are the most fun, they are the ones that allow the most. Freedom for making it what you need it to be or want it to be. Free form movement, sparring, self-defense, 
you know, kind of uh, randori mat work sort of stuff. But done in a way where everyone can feel safe and like they're they're getting better. You know, the type of sparring we were doing last night, he didn't even have to tell us. Adjust based on your partner. Mm -hmm. You know, I was sparring my instructor, some other black belts. We were going harder and faster. I took a couple shots. <laughs> And I sparred some kids. I did not punch them in the head in the same way that I would have punched, you know, people who've been training longer than I have. And I know like to get punched in the head because they're weird. This is something that comes up when I teach my seminars is, is the, the root, I think, to the best learning is feeling safe. And so we, we have that ability to do that. Now, there are there could have been other ways that he could have said, you know, I know this person likes to go a little bit too hard. Let me make sure they only go with certain people, or maybe I put a modifier on the drills or, or whatever it is. But I think if we're going to reduce it down to one thing and make it the simplest concept possible, it was fun. He looked for what is the, what is the thing or things, because we did other things that are going to be the most fun. And we didn't wait till the end of class to have fun. We had fun towards the beginning and throughout, but it wasn't all equally fun. It was, let's start off with this thing that's really fun and let's have a good attitude and let's everybody feel good about things. And then let just quick hits all over the place. And I even remarked to him at one point, I looked at the clock and we still had almost 30 minutes to go. I would have sworn we'd been training for two hours mm. in a good way. I was like, yep, we were having a blast. And there's still time left. That's great because everybody was having fun. Everybody was working hard. Excellent. Mark uh, responded and said that was great advice. Thanks. So, excellent. Good job. Um, we, you know, we talked about some products that Whistlekick sells. Yep. We also uh, have some programs. And yep. I, uh, I have a, a martial art test coming up in January. Mm -hmm. And I know that it's likely going to be one of the biggest cardio tests that I, I mean, I've, I've gone through multiple black belt tests different schools and they all are, you know, difficult for their own things. But I know that this test in January is going to be cardiovascularly. There's a lot of endurance going on in this test. Uh, and so I'm really thankful for the, the cardio program that uh, whistle the cat mm. fuel fuel. Yeah. Uh, what do we launch it as? We launched it as uh, fight conditioning. Yes. And I always, and I, you know, I, I hate name some of the names that I give to things. Like it's <laughs> like, why do you hate that name? You named it. It's like, well, you know, it was the best I could come up with. And then we rebranded, and they all have four letter F names. None of them is that word, you weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the fuel program is rooted in my observations that in any combat sport, people do not go hard for more than twenty seconds at a time. It doesn't happen. Show me any fight. The most you get is 20 seconds, and that's because the way the body works. Most people can't go more than 10 seconds at full intensity. You look at um, sprint times in running, and that's where most of the research has been done on developing um, cardiovascular, like really developing cardiovascular fitness. It's, it's in that context because it's, it's a single modality. And took that as well as the things that I know from coaching and training and teaching and made a program and we had someone and I think we put this testimonial on the website somebody wrote in and she said you know I, I picked up this program to prep for a test mm -hmm. she said she said I, I had steam at the end I, I had yeah I had juice left over and it works because the principles by which you get fitter, are, are pretty, um, they're simple. It, it's not easy to do this work, but it is simple. And here's the best example. How many, about you, how many of you out there have done running for your test? You know, you run, you're jogging, you know, you're doing three, five, 10 miles a day. And you get into the sparring portion of your testing and you're gassed early 20 seconds in and you're like, <gasps> why am I so tired? Mm. 
because it's a different energy system. The way the body processes energy at moderate intensity is not the same as it does at light intensity or high intensity. And there are at least three, some say four, some suggest there are far more than we haven't discovered them all yet, energy systems. And the fuel program is rooted in the one that is most applicable, which is very high intensity for very short duration, mm -hmm. followed by sustained rest. If this sounds like something that you, as a listener or watcher, would benefit from, you can get it. You can purchase this whole program, whistlekick.com. And while it is not written for schools, if you are someone who is in, in charge of running classes and you're looking for additional ideas, you are welcome to buy the program, learn from the program, take the ideas in the program, and then implement them. Yep. It's, there's a guide that goes with it, explains how I got to all of these decisions You'll learn a lot, and it's far less. We should probably raise the prices. I know I've said this, and I will keep saying this, but we should probably raise the programs because compared to anything else out there, which there is nothing like this out there, but if we look at like the strength and conditioning program, it's like a third of the price of what anything comparable is. We're probably underpricing it, and people probably think they suck. But they don't. They work. I'll give you your money back if you go through and you don't get the results you want. You just got to prove to me you did the work. If you did the work... I'll give you your money back. I'll, I'll let you all know in January how it went, how much, how gassed I was or not. That's right. All right. You ready for your last and final question? I'm ready. Okay. Last and final question comes from Stephen Watson, a very thoughtful person and on the show. When a student brings a concern they have to your attention, one sincerely held by them, but you don't consider it a concern or issue, how do you address their concern? As an example, mm -hmm. they're afraid to be hurt sparring, but you've sparred for decades and have safety protocols in place. Sure. One of my fundamental principles, just as a human being, is the recognition that my way is not the only way or the, necessarily the best way, and that my experience is not everyone's experience. We, we live in a very interesting time where it's become quite easy to dismiss people for having different beliefs. And, and I find that to be really unfortunate. There are people out there who, if they hear this concern, well, I, I'm, I'm afraid to spar. Don't be afraid. You'll be fine. Okay. And, and, and maybe that's true. But are you really hearing the person? And, and this is where, as a, as a just another person, you have to truly listen to not only what they say, but what do they mean? What if that person has some trauma? What if that person attended classes at another school and they had a very different attitude towards sparring and they got the tar beat out of them on day two? Mm -hmm. Trying to find out what's prompting the question, I think is the most important part. And that's where if it's a question like this, or, or frankly, mo most questions that would probably fit in this category, I would say, let's talk privately. Can you stay after class? If you can't stay after class, can we chat on the phone? Can we grab a cup of coffee? I want to hear you, but recognize that they may not be willing to tell you that they had, you know, that they were assaulted in front of everyone. Mm -hmm. The fact that they're bringing it to you shows a tremendous amount of trust and you want to honor that. So you got to dig. You've got to ask some really good questions. Now, if, if you want to know how to ask really good questions, you listen to the Monday episodes of Martial Arts Radio. It's the best advice I have because I've learned how to ask good questions by asking questions and kind of reviewing, did I get the answers that I wanted? You're asking open-ended questions. Okay. Um, thanks for bringing the concern to me. I can see how you might be concerned. This is all new to you. You don't have decades of experience knowing that the risk of you getting hurt is pretty low. And if you do get hurt, you're, <clears throat> it's probably going to be a bruise or what. I mean, I've got a. What, can you see it? No, they can't. Can you see it? I can see it. Yeah. Yes. You know, there's a good one coming in. I clashed shins with someone and <clears throat> pretty much took the muscle from the bone and then put it back. And whew, I'm not going to call that hurt. It's painful, but. I'm not injured. There's only so far you're going to be able to go using words, but really what's that person 
asking for when they ask you that question or really any question that's rooted in a concern. They're looking to trust you and feel safe. We said it earlier in this episode, in order for, or was it another one? You've got to feel safe in order to truly learn. Mm. And this person is telling you, I'm concerned I will not learn because I will not feel safe. How you solve that problem depends on what the problem is. Maybe it's, you know what? I get that. There are a few people here that I am less concerned with you sparring. Why don't you watch them next class and see how much control they have? You can sit out the next sparring class and evaluate for yourself. And if you don't feel comfortable at that point, then let's talk further. The only wrong answer is to dismiss the person. If you make any effort for that person to feel heard and understood, you're probably going to be fine. If you dismiss them, they're going to quit. Don't dismiss what other people say. It is an arrogant position in and out of the martial arts. Your experience in the world is unique, as is everyone else's. And we would be in a far better place if we weren't dismissing everyone and saying your way is wrong and you're stupid by extension Mm -hmm. and my way is right. And I can't believe you can come to that conclusion. You know what I say when I don't understand somebody's perspective? Help me to understand. I help me to understand. How did you get there? we, we, we had more or less the same inputs, mm-hmm. maybe a little bit different, but you got somewhere mm-hmm. completely different. I want to know, because guess what? That's how I learn. Yeah, that's good. I, I would say uh, talking privately is great. Um, and I think getting to the root of why they feel uncomfortable. Sometimes I have found it's because they, it's just something new and they're uncomfortable and they don't know. And that's okay. New things can be scary. Absolutely. And maybe they're looking for you to say, it's okay to suck at this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or it's okay to do something slower, right? Let's let's do it in a, in a way that you will feel comfortable and gradually build your comfort level into whatever the thing is that you don't feel comfortable doing. Sure. So I like that. I dig it. Awesome. Cool. That'll take us to the end. Yeah, that uh, takes us right to the end. All right. Remember, if you have a question that you want to contribute to next month's Q&A, you can email Andrew, Andrew at WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com. If you forget his email address or you want to email me for something other than those questions, because they're all a surprise. I don't want to know them ahead of time. Jeremy at WhistlekickCom. Our social media, it's at Whistlekick everywhere you could think of. Our primary website, whistlekick.com, where you can buy stuff and links to all the other things that we've got going on. Our Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. I think we even have like a link from whistlekick.com. Just go to whistlekick.com. You'll find everything you want there. Sign up for the newsletter. Stay up on what we're doing. Grab a program. Invite me in to teach a seminar. Suggest a guest for the show or a topic. You know, all of these are great things. The more you're willing to contribute to what we do, in terms of time, energy, and or money, the further we can take this stuff. And if you're watching, you probably find this stuff worthwhile. So you're you're part of the sports structure. And leave a review. You might get leave free a stuff. Review. And leave a review. At this point, if you leave a review, I would almost guarantee that you would get free stuff because we haven't had a whole lot of them lately. Nope. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate you being here. Until next time, train, train hard, hard smile. smile. And have a great day.